I have no hand strength or arm strength or any strength. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm actually going to be ranking all of my ABH palettes. So I've, I've been thinking a lot, and I know a lot of people have been doing some really great videos, kind of just like on the death of ABH and how they're becoming a really expensive but not as good color pop. <laughs> And as I've been panning an ABH palette for this whole year, I spent a lot of time with the formula and a lot of time analyzing like their releases. And I started out this year with like this being my favorite brand. And now <laughs> they're not. <laughs> but I did still purchase a couple of palettes this past year, along with some other palettes throughout the last year as well. And I've seen a steadily kind of just decline in my interest and in some parts their quality but what i really wanted to do is start a series of these ranking videos i don't want to rank all of my eyeshadow palettes because i have over a hundred and that video would take forever <laughs> not only just to film but to even like think about ranking all of those palettes but i thought you know i think i have a decent amount of brands where i have enough palettes where i could rank them within the brand and so of course abh was the first one that came to mind so i have seven abh palettes and they're all the same basically they're 12 pan palette uh size shape iteration whatever you want to call it because i didn't pick up any of their other like new norvina palettes or the mini palettes or i don't even have any of like their singles or anything the only palettes i've ever or really eyeshadow products i've ever been interested in are the 12 pan palettes so i have all of my palettes right here and i've pre-ranked them just to make it a bit easier for me to get through this video in a timely fashion and i'm gonna start with my least favorite and work all the way up to my favorite and just to get it out of the way i'm not actually wearing abh on my eyes today because i can't plan things properly i'm actually wearing a Too faced palette this is the sweet peach palette which I don't know when I'm trying to pre-film so I don't know when this video is going up if the palette resurrection of the sweet peach palette has already come out I'll link it if not I have a palette resurrection for that palette coming out soon and this is one of the looks all right so palette number seven my least favorite of the Norvina or the oh, oops there it is <laughs> my least favorite of the ABH palettes I own is the original Norvina palette which is kind of funny like now whenever you search abh norvina you can't even really find this palette it's all like all of those crazy new blah palettes but that being said this is the original abh formula and the layout and everything honestly if i could go back in time <laughs> i wouldn't have bought this you want to know why i bought this because it was a bit different and because i thought the norvina thing was just a uh, a one-time thing <laughs> Yes, laugh at me. <laughs> I thought it was just her chance to come in and do like a palette with the brand and kind of put her own stamp on a product. I didn't know at that time. I don't really think anyone could have known that she was going to take over the brand and like do all this other crazy stuff and constantly release products. But yeah, I bought this because I thought it would be more of a collector's item. And at the time I loved ABH. And even though I'm not a huge fan of like pinks and purples, I got this. That being said, I'm not a huge fan of pinks and purples, and I barely reach for this palette. I'm gonna hold on to it, because it is it is the, the original Norvina palette, and I know at some point I'll get to it. Like, I, I regret purchasing it, but I'm not gonna declutter it, <laughs> if that makes sense. So this is number seven. Palette number six is, I think, the only collab palette I've ever actually picked up. Uh, I mean, if you can call the Norvina palette a collab palette, which I don't think so, since she's the daughter of the owner. But this is like the actual, like only collab that I've picked up from ABH. And it's this far down on the list just because I haven't spent a lot of time with it yet. So it's not really the fault of the palette. It's more of me not having the time or the bandwidth to actually fully test it out. And that's the Alyssa Edwards palette. So I have to say, this is the one collab that's been regurgitated out this year that really struck me, really intrigued me. And I still even have a little brush in here. Um, the colors are just pops this is the first time i know maybe not the first time they've come out with it but it's the first time i've seen these bright colors in the abh formula you've got this bright yellow you've got a bright pink a bright blue a purple and this is basically i got this because i really wanted a rainbow abh palette because i love the abh formula <laughs> and 
I just really wanted these shades. You got a bright white, a, a nice orange, and a nice matte black, a brown. So this is kind of everything that I was like missing in this formula in my collection. So I grabbed it. Um, I have to say, also, I really like the packaging. I kind of wish all of them had this packaging because it's just like soft plastic and like this is just like not even embossed it's just slightly raised it's the cleanest packaging I have the other packaging you'll see gets like disgusting <laughs> even though like I try to like lint roll it and dust it and shit it just oh, it's almost a lost cause at this point like I said this is only so far down in the list because I haven't had the chance to fully test it out but I actually still like it okay so this next palette I purchased because it was a bit colorful. I think this came out right before the Alyssa Edwards palette so I thought like when this came out this was the ABH colorful palette. That being said I've tested it out. I actually did a video on this one and I still really like it. I just don't reach for it as often as I do kind of the rest of these palettes that are coming up and that's the Riviera palette. I thought this was such a good release. A great summer palette. I love the packaging. This is not just scream summer. Oh I love this palette and it feels so nice. Oh I'm gonna make a mess. And you've got all of these beautiful like summer shades. I love the shimmers in here. Absolutely love them. Um, the mattes, I think, are uh, looking back, I think they're a little disjointed. Like, I don't know why we have this dark brown. I think we could have had a different shade right there. Um, there are some repeats, of course. There's a purple, there is a pink, and you get very similar shades in the Alyssa Edwards palette. Let me actually, like, look at these side by side. So you do get some very similar shades in here, but of course the Riviera is a lot more shimmer heavy and a lot of the brighter colors are shimmers as opposed to like, you got a good mix, but mainly mattes in the Alyssa Edwards palette. So I really think these two palettes work pretty well together. But I honestly think this is probably where ABH peaked before they started like slightly going downhill and releasing things nonstop and doing stuff. Cause I remember a lot of people were like really excited for this release. The PR packages were actually really cool. They came in like little tote bags that looked like this packaging. And I just thought this was such a, a well curated palette and a really good release. And then like after this, it was just kind of like, mm. Mm. all right. So we're actually on palette number four now. Okay. So we're just about the halfway point. This is a palette that I actually, I'm pretty sure I trashed in a B-Wow or a Weekly Wow um, back when I was doing those weekly. And then I bought it and I really liked it. <laughs> and I had to eat crow. And I'm pretty sure I did a whole video talking about like products I talked shit about, but then like really liked and had to like eat my words. I'll throw that up in the cards if you guys want to see it. But this is the Soft Glam palette, otherwise known to a lot of people as the Soft Clam, which I think is pretty funny. But it's just a really, really like, I don't want to call it a basic palette. It's not a base. It's a neutral palette. For me, what really makes this a great neutral palette are the textures and the choices they made between mattes and shimmers. And just looking at this, like from far away, you're like, mm, okay, yeah, whatever. I wasn't tempted to buy this until I was in, I think, uh, an Ulta and I saw it on display and I looked at it like up close. Like, just take a look at this up close. So looking at it this close, I think the camera is washing it out a little bit. So I do apologize for that. But you see the textures, you see the colors, and I was actually just sucked in. Like, looking at this, and then I touched a few of the shades, and of course, it is the original ABH, like, buttery formula. Let's just do a swatch. Ugh. Yeah. So, that's, mm, that drew me in. And after getting it, and trying a few looks, and each one coming out gorgeous, I was just like, ah. I have to eat my words. It's a great palette. I really like it. However, this is a very warm toned palette. So you've got all your kind of warm toned shades. Stuff like this one is kind of like a little odd one out, but it's a very warm, neutral, bridal kind of palette. The next palette actually took me by surprise and it is another neutral palette and it's a cool toned palette, which I am not really drawn to cool tones as much as the warm tones. But of course, I think the beauty community as a whole is more oversaturated with warm tones ever since the Natasha Denona Sunset palette. It's been very warm toned. Um, and this being such a bright, bold, cool toned palette really struck me and I was really excited. I'm pretty sure I bought this right when it came out on Sephora. And this is the Sultry palette. And the packaging, I have to say, a lot of people, uh, the packaging was really divisive. Like some people loved it, some people hated it. I like it. I like anything other than the, than the this packaging because it gets so dirty and it looks gross. But I like that they did something different here. 
again, the PR packages for this looked gorgeous. It was, like, in a box of, like, gilded roses and, oh, like, they can do PR. I'll give it to them. There's a reason why everyone is falling over themselves, making a fool of themselves on Twitter to get onto their PR list, okay? Excuse the mess in my matte black shade up here, but this is such a good, cool toned, like neutral palette. I could have done without that like pop of peach right there, and maybe we could get another gunmetal or another shimmer shade, but I actually really like this palette. I've gotten some great looks out of this palette. I did um, do a dupe video. So there is a dupe out there if you don't want to purchase this. It's actually from Alter Ego. I'm pretty sure it's the first palette Alter Ego came out with was a dupe for this. And it is a good dupe. I would recommend that if you don't want to spend the 42-ish dollars on this. But that being said, I really like this color story. I did like get a chunk out of my matte black shade here. I used it for my pen the palette, which was coming up. <laughs> Um, because I did make a Franken shadow um using a dark blue shade in the subculture palette. So that's kind of where I got the shade from. I just kind of dug it out of there. This is such a good palette, and my favorite shade is Cyborg. It's such a nice, cool toned silver. Oh, let's just okay, let's go. Uh, <laughs> it's such a pretty shade. It's like a light purpley gunmetal silver. It's uh, it's so pretty. So yeah, this palette comes in at number three. Coming in at number two, I have a personal history of this palette. This is actually the like first palette I bought from Sephora. No, no, that's a lie. It's the first palette that I bought online at Sephora, which is not. But it's the first more higher end palette because the first palettes I ever bought were like these small Too Faced ones. So this was the first like bigger, more expensive, high ticket item that I purchased from Sephora. And I did some of my first, first like adventurous eye looks with this palette so I'm never gonna get rid of it I've had it for way too long so I don't know if it's actually any good I haven't used it in a long time but this is the modern renaissance palette there's a reason why everyone goes nuts over this palette and why it caused such a stir when it first released like this was what put ABH on the map for good reason this is a gorgeous and unique palette at that time, no one has done anything like it, and while there have been a lot of brands and a lot of people that have tried, no one has gotten to this. This is such a great palette. I think the first eye look I think I ever posted anywhere was with this palette, using the reds and the pinks, and ugh, I love this palette. So good. This is, I think, this is a perfect example of what a well-curated palette looks like. Like, you can see here, it it's cohesive. It's got a color story here. It's giving you so many options. You've got some neutrals, but then you've got like an orange and you've got pinks and you've got a light purpley kind of ah, lilac shade and you've got like this deep, deep pink. Uh, and I think that they did perfect on, ooh, hiccup, excuse me. I think they did perfect on making this a mainly matte palette with really only like two to three shimmers. It's just so good. Ha! Huh. Believe the hype when it comes to modern renaissance because it's there. The only downside I have for this is that I've seen other videos where people say if they have the palette for too long, they can clearly tell a difference in the formula. Um, mainly a thrifty beauty page. Um, she had her palette for the longest time and then she started noticing a difference in the actual like formula of the shade. So she repurchased the palette. Um, I haven't actually used this in a while, so I probably have to go back and retest it and see if it's still usable but if not i would repurchase this just because it has such a special place in my heart in my collection in my makeup story but it's still not number one and if you've been around my channel for any length of time this year <laughs> you could have seen this coming from a mile away yeah it's subculture yeah okay <laughs> duh i had to have loved a palette to pan it for a whole year right <laughs> So, uh, should I show this? I did just film my last update, so it shouldn't be that much of a difference. Um, but if you missed that, I'll throw it up in the cards. But this is what it is looking like currently. It's mostly gone. And that's because I've been working with it all year. All year. And my goal is to finish this by December 31st. And I honestly think I've got a pretty good shot at doing so. But uh, this palette unfortunately is like so controversial because so many people like really hated it and I'm gonna say that there are some flaws with this palette it's not like a perfect palette but I think 
at that time, ABH was just like this like amazing, like luxurious kind of mid-range brand um, that really hadn't come out with a dud. And so the minute they saw, or they, I mean the beauty community, saw something wrong with one of their palettes, they jumped on it. So I think, honestly, quite honestly, I have the first batch of the palettes. So this was the palette that came out at the very beginning. I have issues with two shades. Two of the shades were issues for me. But that being said, the hype where everyone was jumping onto the bandwagon just to like shit all over this palette, I think that was overblown. I really think a lot of people were doing it for the clicks, for the drama, for the views, you know. Um, that being said, the two shades that were just duds for me were Cube, which was like that light iridescent kind of duochrome shade. That immediately got hard pan and like I couldn't use it. So I literally just took that out of my palette at the beginning of this year. The other shade I'm having issues with is um, Untamed. It tends to be pretty patchy. Um, so I really do have to like build it up and not blend it out too much because if I blend it out on its own there are spots and you, it takes a lot of work for that shade but other than those two shades I really love this palette and I love I loved the color story I saw this color story when it first like was sneak peeked and when it first came out and my mind was blown this is me this is fall in a palette I love fall <laughs> and I love the the deep the grungy there's like depth to these shades ah Love this palette. After I, I hopefully finish this at the end of this year, I don't want to repurchase it just because I've got other so many other palettes in my collection. But I am going to keep the packaging. After I finish this, I'm going to see about cleaning this up. But also on the bottom, you can see if you use a palette for a long time, this fuzzy stuff, stuff does come off. So I don't know if I'm just going to leave it as is, but since this is a darker color, it doesn't look as dirty as like my Ron and Renaissance palette does, which looks gross. <laughs> and that's me actually trying to clean these palettes. So there you have it. Those are all of my ABH palettes ranked along with my thoughts on the brand as a whole. Bit disappointed, but you know what? It's the makeup industry. We are not at a loss for makeup products or makeup brands. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up and let me know down below what brand you want to see me rank palettes from next. Thank you guys for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.